Khalistani terrorist Pannu, who as you know has accused India of being linked to an assassination plot targeting him on American soil, has now said in an interview to a Canadian news channel, CBC News to be precise, that he was in touch with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's office and that he shared information against India with Justin Trudeau's office in the wake of Nijar's killing. And he talks about some detailed spy network that India has been running in Canada. Now, the, the very fact that a, a, a man who's been designated as a terrorist by India says he is the one who's been cooperating with Justin Trudeau's office and has been supplying information to him. I don't think it, uh, you know, shows Justin Trudeau in a good light at all. No, particularly when Panoon um, has uh, recently, you know, made the statement or put out something basically saying that India will cease to exist. <laughs> so uh, I think he's also trying to gain a little self-importance through this because the, um, you know, evidence which was provided to Canada was apparently from the US uh, through the Five Eyes Network. So Panoon is also trying to make hay while the sun shines and uh, get himself more importance by projecting himself. Uh, but clearly there is uh, a political element to the very public stance that Canada has taken because otherwise it could have all been dealt with in discrete dialogue uh, and through back channels, but instead it's been a very public attack. Therefore, the conclusion that there's obviously a broader political purpose as well. And I think it's A, to consolidate minority support for uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, and B, he's, you know, there's the commission uh, Parliamentary Commission on Foreign Interference in uh, Canada's politics. And that was set up really with China in mind. And, um, you know, the fact that China had been interfering very uh, brazenly in Canadian politics and sometimes impacting outcomes. Uh, but I think Prime Minister Trudeau, by bringing this Indian and the in, in the inquiry, also brought India in through all this, saying that India is the other country which has been interfering. And so, in a sense, it diverts from the original focus of this inquiry because China actually supports the Liberal Party. That, that, uh, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but they are, but okay, go ahead. Yes. they are less hard on China in their policies than the conservatives. That is such an important point you're making. And, you know, uh, there have been reports suggesting that the Indian government truly believes that, uh, you know, Trudeau's meltdown may have been triggered by this upcoming deposition where he will have to explain how his government failed spectacularly to prevent China from interfering in Canadian elections, in Canadian domestic politics and having a free run in that country. Believe it or not, but China actually runs illegal police stations across Canada. How will Justin Trudeau explain that? The height of hypocrisy. The man is accusing India of foreign interference. Uh, let, me, let me take this to Adit Kothari and Dr. Vineet Prakash. Starting with you, Adit. You know, Panun saying uh, that he's the one who shared information with Justin Trudeau's office regarding the killing of Nijar. Now, that is really the last thing that Justin Trudeau needs, an endorsement from a designated Khalistani terrorist. Given that his credibility is already at an all-time low, uh, Justin Trudeau doesn't come out smelling of roses when Pannun says, I'm the one who's, who's been uh, cooperating with Trudeau's office. 
Well, I, I sincerely hope that the NEA is able to exploit and completely dismantle, you know, all of the Canadian narratives around this uh, this, this uh, relationship uh, issue. Pannu is someone who has 22 cases pending against him uh, in India. A lot of them are of very severe uh, nature. Uh, you know, there are reports of his offenses on how he has uh, basically intimidated people and how he has coerced people to act in certain ways. You know, it doesn't reflect very nicely on a sitting prime minister of a, of a G7 country to have, uh, you know, links uh, stated on a public TV, which is connected, which is a state, uh, it's, a, it's a state TV at the end of the day. Uh, so, you know, it, it doesn't really reflect greatly on his image. And uh, Washington is known to use, uh, you know, people like Pannu as sticks against uh, India wherever they can. At the end of the day, you know, all of these people like Pannu in, in the United States or, you know, number of other people uh, in Canada, in the UK, they are all creations of the West. You know, they are the Frankensteins that they have created. And sooner or later, these Frankensteins will turn into a troublemaker for, you know, their own uh, in internal politics. You know, last year, a, a very interesting report was you, filed by this. Uh, you know, you, you make some very valid points and I have to agree with you 100%. The only reason I'm interrupting you is because we now have Daniel Boardman, Canadian journalist, joining us live from Toronto. Daniel, welcome back to Global Lens. Good to have you back on the show. Let me begin by asking you a, a question about about Pannu's statement in an interview to CBC News in Canada where he says, I'm the one that shared information with Justin Trudeau's office about Niger's killing and Indian, the Indian government's so-called involvement in it. Now, a designated Khalistani terrorist endorsing the Canadian Prime Minister and his wild allegations against India, how does that reflect on your Prime Minister? Well, it wouldn't be the first list of terrorists that gave a direct thank you to this sitting liberal government. Remember, um, a couple uh, the beginning of the war, Hamas sent a personal thank you to uh, the liberals as well. So, this isn't uh, groundbreaking uh, on on uh, the Trudeau um, uh, sort of uh, times. Listen, uh, when I saw Panoon on CBC, which is the Canadian uh, state broadcaster, I, I I shook my head. I mean, this is a man who. After October 7th, terrorist attack by Hamas, I'll go to this, in the week after, and I can't remember exactly the day, he put out a video uh, praising Hamas, praising the October 7th terrorist attack, and said, this is what we need to do for Khalistan, and encouraged Sikhs everywhere to do what Hamas did to Jews on October 7th to Hindus globally to establish the state of Khalistan. So this is a man who has openly advocated for extreme um, violence uh, of the most depraved sort in order to accomplish his political goals. Now. Am I shocked that the Canadian government was in touch with Panoon and he's their special correspondent for Sikh safety? Honestly, no, because at the outset of this 13 months ago, it sounded like the accusations lobbied against India were the fever dream of some lunatic Khalistani. And it turns out they are the fever dream of, a, of the, the, the chief lunatic Khalistani. So it's basically what, I mean, we're now accusing India of not just knocking off Niger, who, okay, fine, uh, the, 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 the Sikh leader of the Khalistan Tiger Force. But no, now the Indian government is, is actually running an entire gang network uh, through the entire country, hunting down uh, Khalistanis everywhere. And again, this is fever dream of Panun. And now it's a federal government policy. I mean, it seems like the investigations we're doing and the evidence that we have is Sikhs for Justice and Panun called him up and said, oh, yes, India is actually behind the Air India bombing and they're trying to silence us from getting out the truth. And uh, it's highly likely that Khalistanis have a foothold within the RCMP. We definitely know they have a foothold within the Liberal Party. Many of the uh, cabinet ministers Justin Trudeau appointed are hardcore open Khalistanis. And let's, I mean, I've seen it for years. When the RCMP, we're incredibly a foolish country. When the RCMP wants to recruit, um, like, let's say, a Muslim outreach and it wants to recruit from the Muslim community. They go directly to the most radical fundamentalist mosques, openly associated with the Muslim Brotherhood, and they go in and they recruit from there. And of course, the, the Muslim Brotherhood's happy with this. They say, oh, yes, yes, yes. And then they suggest which people would be good for the RCMP. So the RCMP recruits Muslim Brotherhood activists to uh, to outreach and, and to, to give us um, you know views on uh, how to deal with uh, the Islamic community. We do the same thing with 
Sikhs, right? So instead of empowering the majority of Sikhs, which are non-Calistanis in our country and normal, well-adjusted people, we go directly to the most insane, the most violent, the most strident, and we recruit them into our security agencies for community outreach, 